Today we're going to be doing intermediate. I'm going to show you traditional grip and I'm going to show you. This is Clayton Skinner. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Beat. Hello. My name is Clayton Skinner. This is Beyond the Beat. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to play a shuffle. So understanding a shuffle or a swing pattern is not exactly as difficult as you would think. Uh, basically what happens is if you were to take a regular eighth note pattern, like say on your hi-hat, and you were to just count one and two and three and four and, ordinarily you would want to try and put those ands, the eighth notes, as directly in between the ones, twos, threes, and fours as you can get them. Uh, now a shuffle pattern is a little bit different. Uh, shuffle is when you take the and and you move it slightly closer to the following quarter note. So for instance, rather than it being one and two and, it would go, it would kind of feel like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and so on and so forth. Um, that basically is the same concept as swinging as well. Swinging would be, uh, well basically the exact same thing. It's just played a little bit different. So if anybody ever asks you what's the difference between a swinging eighth note pattern and a straight eighth note pattern, you can now tell them what the difference is. So how do we achieve that shuffle pattern? Okay, so this is just one of the ways to do it. Uh, basically what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a grouping of triplets, kind of like what we did with the last one with the tri triplet grooves, and what happens is, is when you have a grouping of triplets, so you count those triplets one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, so on and so forth, um, you take the grouping of three notes and you remove the middle note. So that would be the and. So you're counting this now one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one. So you take and you remove that middle note and replace it with a rest. And that rest is indicating that you're going to hold that moment in time silently and then you're going to skip over to the a. Ah. So again, one, rest, a, ah, two, a, ah, three, rest, a, ah, four, a. Ah. It's really quite simple. If you're looking at exercise A on the PDF, you can actually see this firsthand. You will see that in each one of the triplet groupings, the middle note is removed and is replaced with an eighth note rest. So these are eighth note triplet shuffle grooves. So, listen to this demonstration, try to count along with it. Remember you gotta start on one, and then a two, a three, a four, a one. It's pretty easy. So now you could try adding the backbeat. So basically, we're just going to be playing the same shuffle pattern uh, with our dominant hand on the hi-hat. And you're going to be playing two and four on the snare drum. Pretty simple. So listen to this demonstration. Remember, you want to try to make the, the uh, shuffle bounce. And by bounce, it just, it's just means that it's kind of got like a clump, deep, 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 deep kind of feel to it. Uh, that was probably the lamest demonstration you could give, but I don't want. So exercise C, uh, same principle, only this time we're going to be adding the downbeats. We're going to be adding the basic, the bass drum, the bass drum to one and three. So again, this just kind of follows the same pattern as before, except now you're hitting on one and three. You've done this before. So anyway, yeah, listen to the demonstration and try it. I based all of these following exercises on uh, the, basically the first page or the first PDF of the first triplet video that I made. Uh, so if you look at that PDF, you'll see that all of these beats are essentially the same. The only difference is, is obviously these ones are shuffled, so they'll have that 
middle notes in the triplet removed. Uh, so if you have any problems with these, you can just go back to those exercises. Uh, it's the triplet, uh, triplet grooves exercises, part one. Uh, and go over all those exercises while playing full triplets on the hi-hat, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh, so if you have any problems, just go back, listen to uh, those beats, play along to those beats, and then come back to this and see how you do. A few pointers that you can use um, while you're playing the rest of these grooves. Uh, from now on, everything is going to be straight up, like an actual beat. Um, is that you don't necessarily have to count um, count it one, ah, two, ah, three, ah, four. Oftentimes, you'll actually, uh, you might find it easier if you just count the shuffled pattern as and rather than ah. And I know that you achieve this by removing the and, but there's nothing wrong with counting at one and two and three and four and. I have it written out as a ah, just so that um, it's a little bit easier to count for you, just to, for counting for understanding purposes. Um, it's not uber important, but it's just something that might be easier for you. I personally count them and. Uh, it's the same with jazz techniques as well. I count it and rather than ah. So it's just something that you could think about. Um, I probably am just confusing you more or whatever. I don't, I don't care. Okay, so anyway, uh, all these exercises again from here on will all have snare on two and four. So I'm going to start this now rather than say this in the explanation of beat three like I usually uh, remember to do. I'm going to do it now. Yeah. So, okay, exercise one, we have the bass drum on one and, two, one and three, sorry, and then again the snare on two and four. Um, so now you've, you're basically, you have everything covered. We're playing B and C together uh, with the shuffle pattern. It should be awesome. Give it a try. Beat two, we're going to have bass drum on the one, the a of one, three, and then the a of three. So remember, I also stated earlier that all of these exercises are going to have a snare drum on two and four. So just remember that, because I'm not going to say it again. Uh, yeah, so this one's a little bit easier because the two bass drum hits on the one and, sorry, the one and the a, um, they line up with the hi-hat. So you can kind of follow that along. One, a uh, two, three, a uh, four. It's pretty easy. Um, give it a try. Right on. So beat three, we're gonna have bass drum on one, and then the and of two. Three, and then the and of four. So this is where counting it as one and ah uh, two actually benefits you, because you're going to be putting the bass drum on the and of two and the and of four. So if you include that hit, so two bass drum and hi-hat ah, uh, and then three, you're actually completing the triplet. So it'll be no longer be a rest between the one, or sorry, the two and the ah. Um, yeah, anyway, just look at the PDF and you'll understand what I'm talking about. One, two, and ah, uh, three, four. Just, just try counting along with that. Don't forget to shuffle with your right hand or your dominant hand. Uh, just give it a try. Listen to the demonstration and then give it a try.
Exercise four, we are going to have the base term on one, the av one, three, and then the and of four. So this, is ex this exercise is a combination of the last two. We just kind of put them together. So give it a try now. Uh, remember, you have four, the bass drum on and, the hi-hat on a, ah, and then you'll follow up with three again. So right there, you're forming the full triplet. So you may actually want to remember to count that four and a uh, one. Just something to think about. So B5 will now be putting bass drum on everything that we've done so far. One, the A of one, the and of two, three, the A of three, the and of four, and then, yeah, one again. So give this one a try. Uh, you may want to, again, make sure that you count it properly. Make sure that you count those because you'll be forming full triplets again. Uh, just listen to the demonstration and then give it a try. Now I've said this twice already now, but uh, when you're practicing these grooves, it's not just enough to actually memorize the patterns, uh, to just play the beats once or twice or whatever, and then kind of be like, hippie, I'm done. Um, you want to take all these exercises and you want to be able to improvise around with them. So you want to take that same concept that you did with the triplet patterns, and you want to actually apply that same knowledge of improvisation uh, to these patterns as well. If you did that with the last exercises, these ones shouldn't be a problem either because again, they're the same beats. Uh, they're just shuffled rather than straight, uh, straight triplets. Yeah, so that's all I really had to say. Well, that's all for this episode. Make sure you check out part two where we'll dive into a little bit more complicated shuffling patterns. So, hope to see you there.